This video is brought to you by Gateway Subaru, higher standards. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Andrew Toss. We'll be checking in with my partner, Captain Willie Dykes, in a few minutes. Well, I'm here in Ocean City, Maryland, where we have just returned from an offshore fishing trip aboard the Fish Finder with Captain Mark Sampson. And we had a couple of researchers on board from the Guy Harvey Institute doing a study on Mako shark. But before any research could be done on the shark, well, we were gonna have to catch them first. It looks like it will be a nice, peaceful day out on the Atlantic Ocean. About as peaceful as a day of shark fishing can be. And the catch of the day is hopefully going to be Mako Shark. So we're going to bring him onto the boat and we're going to attach these transmitters and then let them go and then uh, follow their movements after that. A transmitter will be attached to the Mako's dorsal fin. And whenever the fish comes to the surface, the signal is recorded, tracking its location and movement. One example is a five and a half foot male caught off Ocean City last year. Its first transmission was on May 31st, 2013. The Mako then makes an epic one year journey throughout the Atlantic with his last transmission on May 28th. In a year, he's traveled over 10,000 miles. Identify the areas that they're using, the waters that they're in, the fisheries that they're interacting with, uh, important information for being able to manage their populations sustainably. Shark bite pipe, that we thought was appropriate. <laughs> it's time now to get the lines ready. After all, Captain Mark Sampson is going to have to catch the sharks before any research can get underway. Mako's and blue sharks, there is a slight chance of a thresher this time of year in this location. The first fish is on, and after seeing that it's a blue shark, they try to get it up to the boat for release. But this shark proves a bit difficult. After the release, another rod goes down, and angler Dick Arnold is certain. It's a Mako. Then we see that it's another blue shark. It's a Mako. How do you know? Did you see it? No, I just know. <laughs> I, thought I you, just know, I've got this sixth sense. I thought you had the right baits on you. After some friendly jabs are exchanged, this big blue is at the boat and released. And this particular expedition here of Ocean City is one where we're now adding more satellite tags to these sharks because we want to increase our sample size to get a really robust idea of, of, of the patterns of migration of these animals. There's a break in the action, and everyone's able to admire the somewhat eerie calm of the Atlantic Ocean. But then another fish is on the line. After it jumps out of the water, there's no doubt we've got a Mako. The researchers get ready as the anglers battle the fish, and this one's putting up a fight. Right, right there. Now that this 170 pound Mako is on board and somewhat docile for the moment, the clock is ticking for the tag to be placed. Got the water going in through his mouth, through his gills, which will help to, to keep him uh, healthy while we're just here on deck. The M tag is there, right? Uh, you don't want to stand yeah, on yeah, that? Not, I can't do so. <laughs> it went uh, really well. It took uh, six and a half to seven minutes for the whole uh, operation. Seven minutes for what will hopefully be months or even years of information gathered on this Mako shark. Last year, 
we got our five tags this year, hopefully 14. And then the following year, we hope to put out another 15 to 20 tags. So in total, we should have a really a robust number of animals tagged to see, to infer general patterns of what these maker sharks do. It helps me, uh, the more I learn about the sharks and other fish, I think the better fisherman I'll be. Um, and obviously it's, it's, uh, it's nice to be able to put back something to the resource. If that research spins off and is able to help sharks, uh, you know, that's a good thing. It will be a great thing if these beautiful and magnificent sharks are still in abundance for generations. And that's exactly what this project hopes to accomplish, one tag at a time.